Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and some of the new analysis in regards to various pulsars and the mysteries of these somewhat strange objects. With a couple of papers exploring slightly different things. For example, one of the papers tried to figure out if pulsars and their unusual tails that some of them produce can actually explain why there is slightly more antimatter present in our galaxy. Whereas some of the other papers focusing on the idea of planets around pulsars, they wanted to discover what is the likelihood of finding more planets around these objects by looking at approximately 800 various pulsars in our galaxy and trying to find out if any of them were hosting any planets. And so let's discuss these discoveries and these studies in a little bit more detail. And I guess let's start right here with this beautiful image and this beautiful video created by the scientists from the Chandra X-ray Observatory. The image representing a pulsar known as PSR G2030-4415. Unlike some of the other pulsars in our galaxy, this one is unusual because it's actually moving through our galaxy really fast. Its overall velocity is approximately 450 km per second. And it's probably doing so because the supernova that created this particular pulsar or some other very cataclysmic event very likely kicked it out from its original system and gave it this velocity that it currently has. But unlike some of the other pulsars, it also seems to have a comet-like tail of particles extending as far as 7 light years away from the object in the center. With particles in this case very likely being matter or electrons, but also antimatter or positrons which the scientists believe might actually help us solve the mystery of the Milky Way, where for some reason we do tend to find a little bit more positrons than we expect theoretically. And so the scientists behind this paper do think that maybe some of the pulsars that are moving in a very similar fashion could be responsible for the production of this extra antimatter. But this particular pulsar possesses some other features we've never seen anywhere else before. Now obviously there's this long tail that you see that extends to several light years, but there's also this smaller tail that you see coming from the pulsar that most likely formed approximately two or three decades ago, when in this case the scientists believe the pulsar might have actually caught up with the shock wave or the bow shock that was in front of the moving pulsar that might have slowed down for one reason or another, with the star sort of punching through the entire bow shock producing the effects which suddenly led to a lot of different particles being leaked from this region and being accelerated along the magnetic field lines, making all of this move at ridiculously high speeds, probably about a third of the speed of light, which then also produced all of these X-ray observations we're seeing with Chandra right now. So all of this is to some extent a relatively recent observation and we've just never really seen anything like this before. In this case potentially helping us solve a lot of mysteries of the galaxy and possibly even discovering new mysteries we didn't know existed. But some other scientists wanted to actually see if we can find something around all of the known pulsars to us and specifically find out how likely is it that some of these objects can actually have planets around them. Now it might sound kind of weird but remember the first ever planet ever discovered, and actually the first three planets, were all around a pulsar system, the system we sometimes refer to as Lich, with the scientific name of PSR B1257-12. With the three unusual planets discovered back in 1992 and 1994 being essentially some of the strangest planets we've discovered to date, one of them is still the smallest or the least massive planet we've ever found. This planet right here is only about 50% higher in mass than our own moon. The planet that we sometimes refer to as Droger or PSR B1257 b. All of this located approximately 2300 light years away from planet Earth. And this was of course discovered using a technique known as the Pulsar Timing Array. Which in essence work really simply. By looking at the pulsations coming from a typical pulsar, and by timing these pulsations extremely accurately, if we ever see any deviation from these pulsations, and especially if these deviations are somewhat cyclical or have some kind of a period, it suggests that something could be orbiting around the pulsar and causing it to shift back and forth just a little bit. And if these pulsations are extremely minuscule, it can only mean that there's probably a planet around the pulsar. But in this case we have to be a little bit more careful and look at some of the nearby pulsars as well, because if they all tend to have very similar observations and very similar periodic oscillations, it can only suggest that they're probably being affected by very large gravitational waves, maybe even from supermassive black holes. 
And so that's kind of the idea behind the study you can find in the description that looked through the data of 800 different pulsars known to us, specifically looking for these minute variations in the pulsation of these neutron stars. And remember, these objects are super, super accurate. As a matter of fact, there have been several studies suggesting that we can use pulsars as something to replace the atomic clocks on the planet. That's how extremely accurate these pulsations are. And that's, of course, the main reason why such a tiny planet was even discovered around the pulsar system back in 1994. Even to date, we haven't found anything smaller or less massive than this particular object. And in reality, our telescopes are just not powerful enough to see these types of planets either using transit method or using any other method used to detect planets. But ever since the original detection of these planets in 1992-1994, there were always these unanswered questions. First of all, is this just a really, really lucky find? Are these just extremely super rare? But also, how exactly did they form? What created these planets and how can they possibly exist around a neutron star, around a pulsar? Well, in order to answer the question of their origin, there have been several propositions. One of the propositions involved a potential capture during a collision between two objects that form a neutron star that ends up being a pulsar. So in this case, if one of these objects already had some kind of a planet and it ends up being captured by the final product, it sort of stays in the orbit and most likely will remain there for a pretty long time. Although in this case, because of the extreme conditions and lots of radiation, a lot of these planets will probably undergo some major changes and possibly even potentially disappear completely. For example, a very common system that's known to us, that is very easily visible as well, is something referred to as a Black Widow star, or sometimes known as the Redback star. These are pulsars that are so close to the object near them, very often some kind of a gas giant or some kind of a planet, that the radiation around them starts to literally evaporate the object that's in their orbit, producing a huge amount of particles around the system, and resulting in a very long, very powerful bow shock that's visible from far away and that also propagates throughout the galaxy. But in some cases, it's also believed that maybe some planets could be formed after the supernova creates the neutron star. In this case, the material that doesn't end up moving too far away from the neutron star has a chance to potentially come back and create some kind of a protoplanetary disk around the neutron star, which eventually starts reforming into planets. In other words, theoretically, we could have new planets forming from the old material that used to be a supernova. And this could end up producing planets that have relatively simple and relatively stable orbits. But naturally, we've never really seen any proof of this, and we don't really know if that's actually possible. And the third way that some neutron stars and some pulsars can potentially create planets is once again through that system of Black Widow stars. In some cases, one of these neutron stars is a lot more powerful than the other and might actually produce way more radiation. Or it could also cause some kind of a disruption through various approaches with a slightly smaller neutron star. Either way though, whatever the partner was, the larger neutron star can actually cause its partner to completely evaporate, leaving behind nothing but a core with the core itself potentially being quite exotic. Some papers suggested that it's some kind of a really, really large crystal. Some other papers even called this possibly some kind of a diamond. Either way though, whatever it is, it's definitely exotic and definitely nothing we've ever seen before. But these are just three suggestions for how some planets can form around pulsars. And so, going back to that paper from just a few weeks ago, did they find any more planets around these 800-something pulsars? Well, in short, the answer seems to be not really. In this case, the vast majority of the pulsars they've taken a look at seem to not possess any planets that are 2 to maybe 8 masses of the planet Earth. And though in theory smaller planets and less massive planets could exist here, there was no evidence of any of these planets around any of these 800 objects. And even though 15 of the 800 objects did possess some potential irregularities and seemed to have some periodicity coming from something, in this case, it was just not enough to prove that any of these were actual planets. As a matter of fact, the more likely explanation here is in regards to very powerful magnetic fields present around a typical pulsar. In this case, the magnetic field is sometimes so strong that it does have a tendency to shift some of the pulsations slightly depending on the interaction of the particles nearby. So unless this is something that happens for a long period of time and is visible through many different studies, it's normally just a temporary event. 
And so in this case, this is exactly how the scientists in this paper explain some of these observations. But of all of the 800 posters, one was the most likely candidate to potentially possess a planet. The pulsar known as G2007-3120. With the oscillations present around this pulsar suggesting that something was orbiting around it every 723 days. But this is still very preliminary and could still have some other explanation that could also not be a planet. Either way, 1 out of 800. And that suggests that, well, obviously, pulsar planets seem to be extremely rare and the original detection from 1992-1994 was just a fluke. We really got super super lucky. Which kind of makes sense, because once again, these neutron stars and these pulsars create some of the most extreme environments where it's extremely difficult for any type of matter to survive. With most things, including other stars and other planets, simply evaporating over time. And so the fact that this strange pulsar system even exists and seems to possess three different planets is already kind of difficult to explain and is not something we actually have any explanation for right now. Although I guess by studying this particular system in more detail, the scientists might be able to come to some conclusions and some possible answers after a few years. On that note, well, these are really exciting discoveries and might actually help us understand a little bit more about our galaxy and of course our place in the universe as well. Until we learn more about pulsars or some other neutron stars, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.